Hey Pro Shop Professionals, Alex Hoskins here with you. This week is all about the Storm Layout Adapter. Now this presentation is very information heavy. There's a lot of numbers in here. We're gonna look at the effect that balance holes have on dynamics of bowling balls. This is gonna help us understand more about how the layout adapter is coming into its recommended converted layout for you. So before we dig too deeply into uh, the Storm Layout Adapter, we need to understand what effects are happening with balance holes. So what we did here is we took our engineering software and we created some different simulations to show you what's gonna happen when we put balance holes in certain locations, certain sizes, and certain depths in relation to the pin and the PSA. So these simulations are gonna provide you guys with a general idea of what those different sizes, locations, and depths are gonna have on the bowling ball dynamics. Now what's important to know is that even though these exact numbers can vary a little bit, but the general trends are gonna be the same across all the different situations. So first up, we're gonna take a look at a graph here and we're gonna start with RG. So we know that there's RG, there's total differential, and there's intermediate differential. We're starting with RG. This graph may look a little bit confusing at first, but let's break it down one element at a time. If we look at the x-axis, that's the horizontal axis on the graph there, that represents the whole distance from the pin, so how far away that hole is from the pin. On the extreme left, we have zero inches, that would be straight through the pin, and as we go further and further to the right, we're getting farther and farther away from the pin. If we look at the y-axis, which is the vertical axis here, you'll see that we have the change in RG value. So near the middle, you'll see that we have zero change in RG. As we get above that, the RG value is going up. As we get below that, the RG value is going down. You'll notice that we have four different color lines on here. Each line represents a different depth that that hole is drilled. So you can see the red line represents a one inch depth. That's our shallowest. The orange line represents a four inch depth, which is our deepest hole. So let's look and see if we see any trends that are happening in this graph. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that holes closer to the pin raise the RG more than holes that are further away from the pin. Now this should make sense. Anywhere that we put a hole in a bowling ball, the RG is gonna be raised in, on the axis that the hole is on. So since the X axis is always designated with the pin, when we're closer to that and that's the lowest RG axis on the ball, we're raising the overall RG of the ball more than anywhere else on the entire surface of the ball. We can see this on the graph because this graph starts very high on the left when it's close to the pin, and we can see that it has a downward slope as we get further and further away from the pin. Next thing you're gonna notice is that the deeper that the hole is drilled, the higher the RG goes regardless of the location of the hole. So what you're gonna be able to tell with that is the red line is the lowest line on average of all of the different lines on there. The red line is also the shallowest hole at one inch. Take a look at the orange line, which is our deepest hole. You can see four inches is approaching the center of the ball significantly. We raise that RG value the highest regardless of where that hole is at the surface of the ball because it's deeper. Another side note about that is that's referred to as the donut effect. So as we get closer and closer to the center of the bowling ball, we know that the heaviest, densest mass is at the center of the bowling ball in the weight block. So we're removing some of the heaviest part of the weight block close to the center. It makes the outside appear heavier. Think of the figure skater that has their arms out versus their arms in. Lastly, you can't see this from this graph, but the size of the hole is gonna amplify the change in the RG value. So if you look at the title of our graph here, you'll see that that's a one inch hole. It's a standard one inch diameter hole the entire way across. If we change that to a half an inch hole, these lines are gonna be significantly closer together overall. Likewise, if we go up to an inch and a half size hole, those lines are gonna be significantly further apart. So the size of that hole is gonna amplify the change in RG value. So now that we understand RG, we'll move on to our second number, which is total differential. We know that the total diff is the difference in RG values from the X to the Y. We have this, a similar type graph here. You'll see that we still have hole distance from the pin as our X axis. We have change in differential as our Y axis, okay? We have our same color lines that represent the exact same depths, 
but you're gonna notice that these lines don't look anything like they did on the previous graph with RG. So let's see if we can see what some of the trends are. Holes closer to the pin are going to lower the total differential of the ball. You can see that from this left side of the, of the graph, as we get closer and closer to the pin, we're lowering the total differential. This should make sense with what I said about raising the RG when you put a hole in the bowling ball. Closer to the pin, the pin is the lowest RG axis of the ball. The Y is the highest RG axis. So if we're close to the pin, we're raising it and we're getting it closer to where the high is. So the, two, the difference between the two is significantly smaller than it was before. Now, if we go the other way, we get further away from the pin, we're gonna raise the total differential. So now we're close up here to the Y axis, which is the highest, we're raising that even higher. Now we have a bigger difference than we did between the two. And you can see how this actually goes from uh, low on the left to higher on the right as the uh, whole distance from the pin changes. You're gonna notice that all these lines cross each other in kind of the same place near the middle of the graph. That's gonna be because there's zero change in total differential at three and three eighths uh, away from the pin for all the different depths. They all cross at that same point. Now the reason for that is you're at three and three eighths, you're exactly halfway between the X and the Y axis. So you're affecting both of them the exact same. No change in total differential. On a side note, there will be a change in RG value in that spot, but not a change in total differential. Again, the size of the hole is gonna amplify the dynamic change, just like we talked about with the previous slide. If you used a much smaller hole, those lines are gonna be closer together. A much larger hole, you're gonna get those lines further and further apart. Last thing to talk about here is that once a hole gets more than two and three quarter inches deep, you're gonna notice that there's little change in total differential. You'll see that those lines don't keep going up and keep going down, they actually level out at a certain point. What's happening there is the axes are actually getting so close, the hole is getting so close to the center of the bowling ball that even though on the surface of the bowling ball, you might be on the Y axis, you're so close to the middle that the X is actually feeling like it's affected the same amount as well. So you won't see as big of a change once you get past a certain depth, which is two and three quarter inches deep. Last up, we have intermediate. Okay, intermediate is the difference between the Y axis and the Z axis of the bowling ball. We have our same graph up here. This time on our X axis, we have the whole distance from the PSA. So no longer the pin, we're using the PSA as a reference. You'll see change in intermediate as our Y axis on the left here. We have our same color of lines for each of the different depths. You're gonna notice that this looks pretty similar to the total differential graph. It just looks like it's kind of been flipped in a mirror as far as what direction those lines are going. Let's take a look at some of the trends. So you're gonna notice that holes closer to the PSA increase the intermediate differential. So that's the lines why they're higher up on the left here. The, uh, P the PSA is gonna be the highest RG value uh, on the entire bowling ball. So again, if we're putting a hole through that, we're raising it even higher than it was before. We're making the difference between that axis and any other axis on the ball significantly more. We're making it more asymmetrical. Holes further from the PSA decrease that intermediate. So here we're doing the opposite. Once we get really far away on the left side of that graph and we start decreasing intermediate, we're bringing them closer together. If you actually envision what that looks like on a asymmetrical bowling ball, that would be cutting the weight block through the, the wider side as opposed to the thinner side. You're actually making that a more symmetrical weight block. It's gonna be smoother overall as it transitions down the lane. Once again, you'll notice that there's zero change in intermediate differential at three and three eighths inches. Same as total differential. We're just using the Y axis and the Z axis as our references. Three and three eighths is exactly halfway between the two. No change in uh, intermediate differential, but you will see a change in the total RG of the bowling ball. Lastly, just like with both other examples, the size of the hole is gonna amplify the effect on intermediate. Larger hole, bigger difference, smaller hole, less difference.